Welcome to Update Day in Old School. Today we finally have the release of the highly anticipated update in combat achievements. I actually did already make a video kind of going in depth on the basics and how combat achievements will work along with reading all of the rewards. That video will be linked down in the description so go ahead and check that out after this one. But regardless, combat achievements is a new system that will allow you to complete PVM related tasks with varying levels of difficulty. Similar to Achievement Diaries, except combat achievements are split into six different categories being Easy, Medium, Hard, Elite, Master, and Grand Master. They have confirmed that all kill count tasks and gauntlet speed tasks are retroactive, meaning that these tasks will include your previous amount of kills or your previous recorded times. And this is because this was the only area completely unaffected by the equipment rebalance. Everything else has been reset and will be completely new from scratch with the release of this update. Now moving on, your recommendations and requirements. There actually are base recommendations as well as mandatory requirements in order to complete some of these categories. And this is due to having to have unlocked the area in which some of these bosses are located or the level requirements. For example, for the easy, you have to have access to Mauritania, access to Wintertot slash Temporos, and 60 Dew Slayer. And the recommendation is base 60 combat stats. And some of the bosses you're going to be seeing are Barrows, Seracnus, KBD, The Mole, and then on top of that, the few free-to-play giants. Now the medium tier base 70 combat recommendations and the requirements being the ability to summon Thralls and 77 Slayer. Meaning that brand new quest within the Karind area is a requirement in order to complete this tier. Now moving on to hard, we have base 80 recommendation with 85 Slayer required, access to Zora, and completion of a night at the theater. Now for Elite, you have a 95 Slayer requirement because of the Alchemical Hydra, requiring Song of the Elves completed, Dragon Slayer 2, and the Fremenic Exiles. But for the final two being the Master and Grandmaster, none of the requirements add in terms of difficulty, but your recommendations do, with the Grandmaster category having a recommended max combat stats and plenty of experience across the board with all PVM activities. But first things first, getting started with combat achievements, you're going to be going to Gommel, which is an NPC right outside of the Warriors Guild, right here located on this map. And with that started, you'll be able to pull up the new Combat Achievement tab, which is located along the Quest and Achievement Diary menu, and it looks absolutely clean in my opinion. On it, you're going to have your Combat Level, Total Level, your Total XP, Quest Completed, Achievements Completed, Combat Task Completed, as well as your Collection Log and Time Played. But on top of that, here is also the breakdown for all of the tasks across each of the tiers. 33 easy task, 41 medium, 58 hard, 108 elite, 91 master, and 69 grandmaster. It's quite the coincidence if you ask me. And by clicking on any of these categories, you will pull up that category specific task. For example, if you clicked on the easy, it'll pull up a drop down menu, and then you can click the plus sign for it to pull up a little type and description to show you exactly what you need to do in order to complete that task. There's also plenty of great information on the wiki about combat achievements, and I'll leave this one linked in the description as well. This will help you pull up all of the tasks one by one so you can actually see them maybe a little easier than you would be able to in the game menu. But other than that, this menu is very similar in comparison to leagues if you happen to play any of those. But in addition to the task, we also have a couple extra screens you can have access to, one being bosses and the other one being rewards. First up is a boss screen that shows you all of the boss's specific task in relation to them. As you can see, Sire has eight tasks and it will show you how many you have completed in terms of just Abyssal Sire. And if you do click on any of these bosses, it also breaks down a detailed overview including boss info, recommended requirements slash difficulty, combat level, your kill count, and a link to its collection log. Now moving on, we have the rewards, and I did cover these already in kind of depth in my previous video, but we'll go ahead and kind of skim through them. You also have a rewards tab, which looks incredibly clean. But for a quick run through, for every single tier, you will receive an XP lamp that has additional XP as you scale through the tiers, but also additional level requirements in terms to use them. Each tier will also reward you with increasing amount of daily teleports, either to Trollheim for God Wars or to Mortal Wreck right around the Inferno. And then some of the other biggest additions are increased clue drop rate, additions in terms of the maximum quantity that you can be assigned from the Like a Boss Slayer task, 
New cosmetic variations for the Dragon Hunter crossbow, either with a KBD variant or a Vorkath. An increased drop chance for the Ecumenical Key, lower kill count required to get in the God Wars dungeon, and then above all, probably the best reward in terms of this entire system, at least in my opinion, is the brand new privately instanced God Wars dungeon that has a fee varying from 150k to a little cheaper if you do complete all of the tiers. But with that, we also now have a combat achievements competition to kick off the release. The first player to complete the easy, medium, or hard tier all will receive a year's membership free. And then the first person to complete either the Master, Elite, or Grandmaster will also receive a free membership. But in addition, they'll get a King Black Dragon building set. But now with all of that out of the way, to end off this week's update, we have a few gauntlet changes. Players can now create escape crystals, which are a one-way ticket out of the gauntlet. They cost 200 shards each and can be made at the singing bowl in the first room. And then you can also make crystal paddlefish a new combo food by combining a paddlefish with 10 crystal shards at the singing bowl. And eating them will heal 16 HP and work effectively just like a karambwan. And then finally in other news, Mod Mike D has left a little message after he's completed his stay at Jagex. But with that, that is everything for this week's Old School Update. If you guys did enjoy this video, consider dropping a like. It massively helps these ones out. And if you're around here often, hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you're notified every single time a new video goes live. And I'll leave a little teaser at the end of this video. I do have something up my sleeve in terms of combat achievements. So hopefully you'll be seeing a new series on this channel within a couple days. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next video.